Welcome to another episode of The Unfinished Cubby. With me today is Amy Churchhouse, who is a facilitator of self-change and community change in a solver of problems. And Amy, thank you very much for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me here. Cool. Um, so look, I probably should have started it just moments ago when I said what we would talk about today. So I'll repeat that and say, um, I'm, uh, how did we get connected? You came to the eco village that I was staying at and we met then and we had a really interesting conversation a couple of months ago about your good karma network. And I wanted to share with people about that and then also have a bit of a conversation with you about different um, community projects that are values aligned and how there might be ways that they can come together. So um, I think I'd like to start by just asking you to talk a little bit about um, the Good Karma Network concept and, and the journey with that. Sure. Well, uh, I moved to Melbourne six years ago, 2015, and um, start my, started my career as a vet over here. And uh, I moved from New Zealand. And uh, as, as I was, you know, becoming a, you know, a new graduate vet or learning how to be a, a vet, um, I was aware that, you know, I, I had, I'm a problem solver. And I had noticed that there were a few things happening around the neighborhood where, you know, um, I'd had a few problems that um, I sort of needed some help with. And I was thinking, you know, I'd, I'd really like to be able to connect with other people in the neighborhood and see if there's a way that we could maybe solve each other's problems rather than having to buy the solutions to our problems. Um, so I had a, a tree on my property that needed cutting. I didn't need to buy a saw. I just needed to borrow somebody's, but I didn't know where the person with the sores. Uh, and then I, um, my, I lost my cat and I had everything I needed, but I needed everybody else's eyes to find him. So, you know, it just, there were a few things I, I had to take a day off work to print some flyers at, you know, office works to deliver them around the neighborhood. So resource intensive <laughs> um, to look for my own cat. Um, and it would have been really great if I'd been able to just do a shout out to the community and go, hey guys, have you seen my cat? Um, so all these kind of things were mulling over my head and I thought, oh, maybe I can find a way that we could come together and we could actually, you know, um, yeah, find solutions to each other's problems. Uh, so I found Facebook groups and at the time it, was, it seemed like a functional solution. It had the, the sort of functionality that I needed to be able to bring people together into a space, um, set some guidelines and um, people could communicate freshly, you know, about, about what, they, what they needed. Um, so I designed it as a safe place to, to ask for help from your neighbours. I wanted it to be um, free of selling and advertising. There's plenty of places on the internet to sell and you know, advertise your business. Um, and I wanted it to be safe in terms of being free of all the things that we often see on social media, which is you know, people's opinions and um, people you know, trolling and bashing each other and judging each other. Because mm -hmm. if you're not feeling safe to ask for help, then you won't, and then you won't get your problem solved. So for me, it was about the people who needed something rather than the people that wanted something or decided they wanted to have a go at each other. So no selling, no advertising, no negativity with the rules and uh, anything offered is done so with no expectation of anything in return. So it wasn't transactional either. We didn't need to be, you know, um, hey, I'll give you this if you give me that because then you've got this, this comparison of value, you know, is the thing that you're offering me as good as the thing that I need or, you know, so forth and so on, you know, I'm giving you. Yeah, and that like that little idea then from our previous conversations seemed to be quite the um, like really what what set it apart from a lot of other groups, and um, that it's that's quite simple, but it almost seems like a radical idea in our very transactional society today. Did you just come up with that yourself as a solution to that, or um... well, I mean. You know, yeah, I totally came up with people like, oh, where did you get the concept from? I'm like, well, I made it up mm -hmm. um, because there were two things in there. Number one, if you, if you allow, there was also, it wasn't, wasn't about offering something. It was about actually waiting to, for somebody to ask for help That's right, yeah. so that we could efficiently deal with, deal with the, the problem. Right. So, um, you know, you could, if I, you know, you, I came to you and I was like, oh, let me help you. And then I listed all of the different ways I could help you. I still might not be able to help you with the thing that you need because you haven't told me what it is. Mm. So starting with the need is really, really important. I think that this is something that we don't, we don't sort of 
it's, we don't haven't designed our systems in society mm. um, to actually support people to identify their needs so that we can just figure out whether we can help you or not. Um, so in a community, you know, like if I ask for help, um, hey guys, I need to borrow a saw, the people without saws won't say, no, I haven't got a saw, they just won't help, right? Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. who have got a saw know that they can help, right? It's really straightforward, um, but it's also very efficient, right? Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, that means that things get done, you know, attended to quickly. Um, in terms of being non-transactional, um, the interesting thing about that is that when somebody helps you with no expectation of anything in return, there is this kind of, you, you're allowed to sit with this whole, wow, this person just did this for me because they wanted to. Um, and that, that leaves you with the sense of not, not payback, not I need to. And I think that one of the things we have observed is that people do feel like they're obligated to give something back. Like I just gave away a, a wind trainer yesterday, a cycling wind trainer on my local Good Karma Network. And the woman was like, oh, I've, I've bring, I'll bring you some lemons. You know, they feel, people feel like I need to say thank you and, mm -hmm. with something. Um, and it's interesting that that's, that is a norm and it, it's, it's, it's not really that, it's not that helpful because, you know, the, the woman whose tires I pumped up yesterday <laughs> delivered me some, some muffins. And I was like, you know, when I got them, I'm like, oh, I'm grateful for the muffins, but I really don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so when people give you something back, yeah. they often, it's just a waste of resources potentially because they, they give you something that you don't need. And if sure. they give you a thing, yeah. then it might not actually be useful or it might be problematic. I mean, somebody gives you a bottle of wine and you're an alcoholic, then you've got a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people give bottles of wine. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. interestingly, totally, we, have that yeah, norm, yeah, yeah. we have that norm in, in our society, um, and and I feel like you know when you, when you take it away, then what it does is it actually allows that person who's received um, the. Uh, the, the help with this kind of sense of gratitude that actually becomes a part of their human and they go, wow, that person helped me. I just want to help somebody else. Mm. And so this starts this, this beautiful flow of kind of generosity that isn't about stuff and things. It's about me just helping, you know, like, because you can help me in a particular way and I can help somebody else. We can't all help each other in the same ways. We don't have the same resources. We don't have the same, you know, situations. We don't have the same amount of time, money, you know, all of the things are different for all the people so it's you know if we take away the the transactional engagement then it's not about equal it's about just gifting and mm. and helping and supporting and with whatever I have to offer and I think that's a real real key piece here because you know we need to address the inequality that's in our in our community right the inequality and there is and I say inequality you know I suppose I should actually probably use the word diversity rather than inequality because, you know, we've got hugely diverse communities everywhere we live, um, some more than others. Um, and what one person has to offer in terms of their, um, their time, somebody has, somebody has time, somebody has money, you know, somebody has um, stuff and things to give and other people have hands to help with, you know, some people are very physically capable and other people are less physically capable, you know, and, but, but everybody's got something to offer. Everybody can help, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. And that's the beauty of embracing diversity is that what you have to offer, I can't mm -hmm. necessarily. And so that's great because you can help some people and I can help some people, but neither of us can help both all of the people. Mm, mm, <laughs> but mm. so, to, by ourselves, we haven't got everything, but together we have, you know, um, it's just, yeah. And it, it, it means that the value of all of the humans becomes much more present when we start to be thinking about ourselves much more holistically. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It sure does to me. And I, I love, I love the way you articulate that too. It, it's, uh, you're, you're very inspiring to talk to and listen to. I remember that from last time we spoke now. Um, and, and look, um, it, it, that's a good karma effect.com is the website, isn't it? But, and, and it, it's been quite successful, right? People have been really responsive and you, you've got big communities grow out of this. Yeah, it's been, it's been a very interesting journey. Um, I mm -hmm. had no idea where I was getting myself in for when I just started a Facebook group for my neighbours to help each other out. Um, but yeah, the, because, and this is the, the thing that people haven't really, um, I think, really cottoned on to is that the reason that people, it became popular was that people were seeing 
people in their community helping each other with no expectation of anything in return. So they were like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Look mm. at these people helping mm. each other. And they're watching these things play out on online. Hey, I'll help you. Hey, here, have my bike. You know, you've had your bike stolen. Here, have mine. You know, like, hey, I've got one of those. Um, let me come around and help you. Just people are like, wow, this is beautiful to watch, right? So people feel inspired, they feel engaged, and they want to give as a result of seeing the generosity mm. that they're actually observing, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, then it, obviously the engagement was, was very positive, lots of people engaging, a lot of people, um, you know, joining the group going, oh, it's great. You can, you know, you can have clothes swaps, you know, you can, you know, all sorts of interesting things. People asking about composting and sharing um, their solutions. I think that was the other really huge benefit was that that when, you know, I say, for example, I asked about compost, I'm like, I, I live in a townhouse and I don't have a compost bin or a garden and I don't want my green waste going to landfill. So, you know, it was an environmental, you know, important thing to, for, for me to do was, was to try and reduce my environmental impact. And I asked, and then, you know, a few people said, you know, there's chickens at the school, there's a communal compost bin at the church. Um, and then somebody created the Bel Air worm farm on the edge of the verge next to her house for everybody in the community to oh, use. Wow. So then not only did they see that there were lots of solutions for getting rid of your green waste, even the people that weren't thinking about not disposing of their green waste in the in landfill then got to learn about how to be less you know, impactful on the environment, less negatively impactful on the environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they get to see it, they get to observe that there are lots of different solutions, and then they get to also go and use the belly worm farm. It's like all of a sudden there's all of these, these community opportunities for mm -hmm. everybody in the community you can learn you can engage you can throw your solution in there too um, and so and then the people are going wow well I thought when I had that problem this is how I would solve it but that person's solving it that way that person's solving it that way that person's mm. solving it another way and there's no pressure to have to solve the problem either mm. <laughs> so nobody mm. has to feel bad about not putting their you know, their compost in the compost bin um, because they're not being accused of anything. They're just learning about things that they could do if they wanted to and engaging with them if they want to. So it's on your own terms. You get to engage in your own terms. So anyway, lots of, yeah, those, those, those are the sort of intricacies or the nuances that haven't really been identified as the community building activities, you know, mm. things that brought people to the group and made them love it. The positive reinforcement, the multiple solutions, the embracing of diversity, well, say. yeah, I, um, I, and I'm, look, Facebook is, is absolutely awesome for that. I've, I've been off it for a while because it, it gets a bit addictive for me, but like we've got a few in my township community groups. One is like a free ads one, one is a chit chat one. And a lot of times witness, I witness some, you know, really wonderful community coming together type things like you're describing, but more often than not, it's just the the social media nonsense. Um, pick a well, side that, and that was argue the other part. Deal that with was your the trauma. other. Yeah, <laughs> the other part of the interesting that I hadn't got to yet was yeah. th there's this this beautiful community building that was happening and people were getting engaged and then obviously that was how what spurred the the momentum to, for other people to want good karma networks in their suburb. But I think I didn't realize at the time that people thought that if they put a good karma network in their suburb, then it would just grow and it would just happen. Mm -hmm. And they didn't realize that they needed to nurture it like a garden. They needed to support it. And so I went into into bat and basically was like well, help, here, let me help you build your community by facilitating this positive engagement on your group that actually turns your people into raving fans, then they do the marketing for you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So um, that, that was what I then started to do. And I was like, well, I, I didn't know what I was doing when I started. So let me help you because you don't either. <laughs> um, and if we do it together, then we're also going to bring your skills and my skills and we'll do better. So, and then there were lots of good karma networks and I was supporting a, a bunch of different, well, just working with people to, to share um, our perspectives on how the community is going, how to grow it, all those sort of things. And then, you know, I, as it was growing, I thought, oh, you know, I really need to, um, if it continues to grow at this rate, then I'm going to need some resources in order to support these administrators to keep their their uh, communities safe and healthy and all that sort of stuff. So I, I registered the organization as a, the Good Karma Effects as a charity, thinking, you know, what I've created is a, is a, um, a group that is facilitated by somebody. So we've got a group of people who support 
the people in the community to support each other. So mm -hmm. I, there's a cycle of giving already happening. I figure that somebody will want to support us to support them to support each other, right? Yep. Um, however, I didn't realize at the time that I was just basically um, going into into competition with all of the other charities in, in uh, Australia for resources. And if you don't have a grants officer, then you you know it's difficult to get grants and various other things. So I've learned lots about the the you know that the charity sector or the not for profit sector and and how that isn't really working for lots of the people that are doing things that really matter. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, uh, the, the Good Camera Effect grew to, you know, I think I helped over 55 Good Camera Networks start, of which there are now 36 um, and uh, over 100,000 members involved with the, those Good Karma Networks now. So the, the, the numbers of people who are being supported by other people in their communities through their Good Karma Network daily um, would be very economically valuable. <laughs> Um, like the, the the support that you know, if you were to pay for all of that um, that help, it would be very expensive, right? And so you know, to be able to pay one person or to you know to invest a little bit of money in the, the running of an, of an organisation that supports that to happen, I didn't think it would be a big deal, but it, re it really was. And um, we, we then, of course, you know, this, there, then comes the the social media challenges of um, you know people believing that they their group is for what they want it to be for. Mm. And you know, I was really clear that it was a, supposed to be a safe place to ask for help, but because it became you know, um, essentially what people thought was their community group, they wanted to do what they thought a community group was good for rather than a tool for solving problems that built community. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of, um, and then of course people join Facebook groups and they think they know what it's about because they they see a certain set of things happening mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. they decide to engage how they want to. Mm -hmm. And so the, the administrative teams needed to be, you know, firm about that and also communicate about that regularly, you know, what is the purpose of our group, why are we here together, build that culture. And I, I've learned over the past five years, I've learned lots about online community management and there's huge amounts of, you know, things you can do to facilitate positive engagement and various other things. But it, it does, it needs to be gardened. It needs to be you know, gardened. Garden is, a garden is a is a term you know that it's kind of the the t type of activity you you do to to look after your community is you nurture it um you know you make sure the weeds are pulled out and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you make sure that you you know feeding it and you, that that it's you know it's all looking after itself as well so um that's important but you know i didn't really have the resources to actually train people in online community management nor did i actually know all of the things I know now about um, about what needed to happen. So, I, um, but we learned and we we grew together and, and the the, um, the the guardians as we call them now, um, because it was kind of like that. That's you have a guardianship as opposed to an administrator who administers. I wanted to differentiate the the doing of the job and the, and the sort of action of administering a group to be more of a, you know, a, a holding the space and looking after the space and f facilitating that it stays a safe place to ask for help. And that was always my, my bottom line was that, it, that this place needs to be safe. So there needs to be no judgment. Um, you know, you don't judge my language, don't judge, you know, my, if, if anybody felt judged for the question that they wanted to ask, then they wouldn't ask it. And, mm. and that, that then means that they're at home by themselves with, their problem, and we know that you know social isolation before COVID. Social isolation was the biggest health risk of the Western cultures world, um, which is is challenging. But you know when people are afraid of actually saying help or for afraid of actually sharing how they feel, then that's of course they they get socially isolated. Um, and so I wanted to be able to create a space where that they didn't have that experience. And when you see people being positively reinforced for asking for help, which is what it happened, how it happened to start off with. It certainly does to, to, you know, and many of the Good Karma Networks still, you know, that there's still a very supportive environment um, for asking for help. But what we we saw as it, as it grew um, was that, you know, as the numbers grew and the activities that were happening on there grew and, and things, things change and, and all communities evolve. Um, and of course, then we have different demographics and all the different suburbs, you know, we've got up until recently, we had the Brunswick Good Karma Network, which was the largest at 23,000 members um, which has recently evolved and um, they've uh, disconnected from the good karma effect and, and uh, become their own sort of entity. And, it, you know, for me, the, the good karma effect was never about ownership. It wasn't about 
um, like controlling these people. It was about providing them with resources and, and a framework that supported them to keep their community safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so, you know, we have a set of guidelines that, you know, was, was designed and, and, you know, now it's like five pages long, which is that started off with four, four guidelines and now it's five pages long, but, it, but those developed as, as we encountered problems along the way. And it was like, oh, okay, so if people are going to join all of the good common networks in town to look for house sitting jobs, <laughs> because, it's functional. You know, we, we realized that it was going to be a target for people that were, you know, mobile mechanics, you know, oh, I can help you with your car, <laughs> you know, like, or sure. we were like, okay, yeah, how yeah, do we, yeah, oh, yeah. journalists, journalists looking for stories and, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's like people wanted to exploit it. And I was like, yeah. that's not the point here, guys. These are supposed to be safe places for neighbors to ask for help. If they, if you, they find out that you live in Timbuktu, they're not going to feel safe because they think they're talking to their community. They think they're talking yeah. to their neighbors. I um, mean, that's what we'd really like to. And, and, and when, it, when the groups are small, then it's very much that feel, you know, there's very much a, a community feel as it gets bigger, then you, and you start to go, okay, well, who are these people and where are they? And I hope that they're still my neighbors, but if, if it gets too big, then you might become less comfortable with asking for help um, and I think that's a really it's a really interesting thing to sort of think about in terms of you know how do we help each other better how do we create environments that, that people feel safe to to connect with each other and safe to ask for help um, then that's a, an important consideration is how many people am I talking to here and what are the because people are worried about judgment fear judgment you know is is so it's such a huge barrier to human connection which is you know a, a very disappointing um you know fear and and judgment um because everybody's got something to offer you know they said you know like we want people to come together so they can help each other and i i I, i'd really like it if that was sort of how our status quo is if you know i came to you and i was like hey you know i'm just wondering if you can tell me what you need so i can help you try and find those things and then i'll tell you what i need and and then together we'll probably do better at finding those things for each of us than either one of us by will be by ourselves and i mean you you know that you know collaborative problem solving you know um and i actually i run an uh a, a, a workshop um that that facilitates that that collaborative problem solving where we bring it's called from challenge to change where people talk about their challenges and then we break down um a a technique for uh actually walking through that challenge um and then um we do some collaborative problem solving we break into breakout groups um breakout rooms and um people basically put their problem in the middle of the room they go here's my problem uh, can you look at it from all of your, you know, different places and tell me what you can see? Can you tell me how you would approach this? Tell me what are the things you would do if you had this problem? Mm-hmm. Um, and all of a sudden you get outside of your own limitations because you see the, the, the problem from a whole lot of different perspectives and then you see a whole lot of solutions. So all of a sudden you go from this, I'm stuck in my problem to this place of, um, all sorts of possibilities that you hadn't thought of because you sure. can't, because you don't have everybody else's brains, you know, and all their lives. And, you know, the, the solutions that live in other people's lives are incredible. Mm. You just got to get out there and talk to people and just go, mm. wow, you've done some amazing stuff. And one of the things that I, you know, the Slumdog Millionaire is a, is a, a fantastic movie and it's, it's a really good example of this, you know, this concept of, you know, like he knew the answers to all of those questions because he'd been there. He'd had, he'd seen it firsthand. Nobody knew that he would poss- could possibly have been able to answer those things because of his life. They thought he must have been cheating. But this is the thing is we don't know everybody's been. We don't know that somebody hasn't had our problem before or that they haven't helped a friend with that mm. problem. And when you actually put it, put it out there, then it's really efficient to be able to solve it. Or, or together, you come up with a, a new solution that's actually better than all of you, could, you yeah. know, could create. So, you know, facilitating collaborative problem solving, I believe, is you know, two, twofold. Well, it's actually sixfold there's, there's so many benefits to it you know you embrace the diversity of the humans that you have contributing and and that is a really important thing for us to be looking at doing is is changing the way that we're embracing diversity but if we're embracing it for problem solving then it makes everybody that much more valuable <laughs> you know um but it's it's much more efficient um you 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 know it's much more innovative there's all sorts of um possibilities when you bring people together and and let them you know um, tackle something together and it's so beautiful. yeah totally I, t- I totally agree and, and, and it's a, a wonderful um 
uh, yeah, a, a fantastic effect to see. Um, and so do you then in your five page of guidelines, do, do you feel like, has that been a solution to, um, does that fix Twitter? <laughs> um, it's, it's interesting, you know, the, the, the guidelines typically, you know, th there are two things there that will guide people's engagement. Um, and one is what they see, what they see. So if they come mm. into the group and they see people just using the Wikama network to give away their free stuff, they'll be like, oh, and I've had people say to me, oh, well, you know, we've already got a free stuff group in our, in our suburb. We probably don't need a good Kama network. And I'm like, there's so many more possibilities in a good Kama network than there is free stuff. But mm. because the one that they had to be engaged with was just seeing people giving away free stuff, hey, could you help me to reduce my impact on the environment? Here, I'm giving this away for free. Um, is, is that's what they will think it's for. So people typically will watch what's there and they'll go, oh, I know what to do here. Mm -hmm. so if they're seeing people, and you see this, you know, as soon as there's a negative comment, everybody jumps in with their negative comments, right? Mm. So it's like permission to mm, behave badly or, or keep, you know, keep your, you know, um, keep a lid on it, you know? And it's funny because we've actually, we've actually, because all of the good karma networks are, are connected, we, we see people um, across a bunch of different um, communities and a bunch of different groups. And so some people um, that have been in a couple of different communities um, have also, um, they're also connected through their other Facebook groups or, you know, different sustainability and various other, all the groups out there, right? And people are aware that this particular person that's in a Good Karma Network behaves really badly in this other group, but they don't in the Good Karma Network. And it's kind awesome. of really interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. so I, and, and so you've got to develop a culture and 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 build relationships between those people because then and encourage them to support that culture you know like hey guys we're doing this together you know let's let's keep this positive because it feels good for all of us if we keep it positive mm -hmm. you know because we're, we're not about you know controlling what you say so, you know we've had you know cries of censorship and various other things it's like is this we're not we're not censoring you we're just asking you if you could be responsible for your engagement here you wouldn't behave like that in the street or in your workplace or in your family so why do you think that it's okay to do it here you know and and quite aside from that is it helpful for you to complain about dog poo in your neighborhood is it helpful for you to say for those of you that are leaving dog poo out there just can you not you know I've got some of my it's like the people who are leaving dog poo that who there number one probably aren't in your group um, because they don't like good karma um, Secondly, um, their dog might have accidentally done it when they weren't looking and they didn't mean to. Mm. <laughs> so don't make assumptions that they intentionally set their dog out to poo on your lawn, you know? Like, and, and, and where do we get if you just complain about it? Do we, do we actually get anywhere? Mm. No, you just make a whole lot of people feel terrible because they've seen you complaining about things. And I think that we, we could really think more carefully about what kind of, what we're facilitating by the way that we engage with other people, and I think this is something that, you know, we need to think about as a as a you know as a people, um, is what am I bringing here, and and how is it going to help me get what I want, <laughs> you know, if I want people to you know if I want to, you know, change how things are happening with dog poo in my area, maybe I could say, hey guys, you know, like I've just noticed that quite a lot of dog poo around the area. I'm wondering if we can come up with a solution about how to minimise that. Mm. You know, have you got any ideas? Let's problem solve around it rather than complain about it. It's very subtle, but it's so powerful. Yeah. So um, yeah, interesting um, the dynamics. But the guidelines, you know, are, are there for when somebody does something that is specific, you know, and we can pull it out and go, hey, this is outside the guidelines because this is not the purpose, you know. Cool. Like, yeah. um, you know, we and very rarely do we need to specify, you know, the, there's a framework which is, you know, this group is for this purpose. These are the things it can be used for, um, and you know. It, we try to, you know, keep it local. We keep it asking for help. We keep it, you know, um, environmental, you know, um, environmentally um, positive, you know, like trying to focus on sustainability. Um, and, you know, we, we've had to do that because, you know, if somebody is, um, and the other, the other thing that's really important to me is that um, the initiatives need to be driven by individuals in your community. So say, for example, I've started an initiative or I'm working for a charity and I want some help with something that my business or not business, my charity is doing. So I'm raising money for the charity. I need to be driving that because I'm an individual that lives in your community and I am asking help from my community to 
increase my impact. Um, so that was another thing, as opposed to here's a charity that I support, can you support them? So like it changes the dynamic from, you know, I support the SBCA, you should support the SBCA too, um, rather than I'm raising money for the SBCA and I would like you to help me raise money for the SBCA. Um, it, it facilitates people to see that people are taking action. They're actually doing something about it rather sure. than just well, sharing their like best pages. Yeah. yeah. Or just even, but just sharing people think, sure. think you've heard, you probably heard of the, the term selectivism, you no, know, where people, people share, um, you know, a, a local cause and they think that they've done something for it. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like here, know this. Yeah. Does yeah. it actually do anything or yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, Okay, so when you um, set up a new one of these groups, you have those guidelines right there and, and you have someone allocated as an admin. So I kind of, I'm interested, you haven't actively asked for this, but um, in terms of uh, support, I mean, is this a, you've got lots and lots of things that you're involved in, but is it is it still a focus for you, the Good Karma effect, the Good Karma Network? Yeah, to- we're... We're in an um like an evolutionary place, like with the growth of the groups, we've still got groups that are like, you know, a couple of hundred people big. And then we've got these these thousands of, of people groups. And so it's it's kind of evolved into more of a from a um I, I wanted to facilitate positive change. I wanted to help people help each other and um help people reduce their impact on the environment, help people connect, help people reduce their resource expenditure, their resource consumption, um, help people give give them the opportunity to make a difference just like with whatever they've got, you know, some people don't, can't go and volunteer for a charity. So being able to help their neighbor or somebody down the road with what they've got feels good and it makes them feel valuable, which means that, you know, we all need to feel valuable. So that was what I really wanted to do. And I've it sort of, the organization evolved into this whole, how do I support these passionate community members who haven't done, most of them haven't done online community management before. How do I help them to, to be the gardeners of their community. So um, the, the, the administrators are not allocated to them. They are passionate community members that have come to the organization and said, I would like to start a Good Karma Network. How do I do that? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I support them to get started and then say, mm-hmm. hey, here are some of the things that you know would be good for you to do in your community in order to be most successful. Yeah. But it has, to, it has to be on them. It has to be, we don't have any resources for being able to do it for them. Yeah. So yeah. So- yeah, yeah, well, there's a couple of things I want to, like, so I, it just kind of occurs to me, have you, like, been set up to accept donations and, and like, you know, have a pay, Patreon, for example, and would it be appropriate to say, I'm doing the Good Karma Network thing and I'm, I'm part, like, and if you would like, uh, like, money would help me to continue to do this work if you'd like to support me do that here is that I mean is that within your guidelines and is that something you've looked at and yeah totally well, we're a charity so yeah we totally have yeah. and we have applied for various grants we've got I think we've achieved three grants and interestingly um when we received one from a local real estate agent the people in the group actually spat the dummy and said that I was stealing money from kittens um when they unanimously agreed like um agreed that the the grant would be donated to the good karma effect um, but yeah, the people on the group, when I said thank you to these, this local real estate agent, um, decided that it was not a, it was not a cause that they thought would support because, you know, the administrators don't get, you know, paid anything and, you know, what do you need to, you know, what does it cost to run a, you know, Facebook group? And I'm like, I'm supporting 110 administrators of Good Karma Networks to look after their communities, to keep it healthy and safe. I'm, I'm creating resources. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to, experience. I'm running an organization here to yeah. support these people so that they're well and healthy, you know, like volunteering is hard. And if you have a good volunteering program um, and, and, you know, online volunteering has the, the added challenges of, you know, the trolling aspect, the personal attacks, the um, the online disinhibition effect. There's a whole lot of other challenges that, that like, in-person volunteering doesn't have. Um, and it's 24-7. Mm, <laughs> so there's yeah. a whole lot of other challenges that nobody even thought about. Um, and they didn't think about the scale of, of the organisation and, and that actually creating a collaborative, you know, st- structure to support them was actually very resource efficient. Um, so, you know, what that, that money did for us when, you know, I have to say that was 2000, beginning 2018, most of it's still in the bank because we didn't get any other money. So, you know, we've paid for our public liability insurance. You know, there's money to run the organisation. Nobody's been paid anything, you know, um, and, and it wasn't ever about paying somebody. It was about trying to create resources to support them and, and um, 
anyway, it's been a really, it's a big learning curve. And yes, there would totally be, um, there is a, a donate on our, on our page, but we haven't done a drive also probably because of the fear of, you know, of kickback, you know, like, um, but, sure. But like, what about like you personally creating a Patreon and saying it in the good karma networks that, yeah, uh, it's, there's been discussion around that around that in the, in the board. I haven't created a Patreon, um, but there has been discussion about you know different grants that we can apply for and various other things. And um, that is yeah, that's sort of yeah on hold at the moment, I suppose. Yeah, we okay. just we're, we're trying to figure out what, what we're doing and how we're doing it um, because yeah, it, it's been you know essentially like I've been it opens a, a can of worms to ask the community for money. The thing on social media, what we've found is that people just go to town if they want to. And, and you have to be, we don't have um, a, a media advisor, a communications advisor, a, t- a team. Uh, there is me. Yeah. There is just me and the, and the administrators who are looking after the group. So, you know, um, I used to be a vet and a zookeeper and a <laughs> fitness instructor and an international tour guide and a bunch of other things. I haven't run an organization before or, you know, so I'm doing my best with what I have. And, and that is, you know, my... I decided with my life that I wanted to help people. So that's what I'm doing. And I have done this fully voluntarily for the past four and a half years um, to support other people so that they're okay while they're helping other people, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I, I choose, I ch- I've totally chosen to do that with my life. And, and I have found ways to fund that. Um, my, my veterinary career didn't last very long. Um, I don't know if you know about the veterinary industry, but it actually has one of the highest suicide rates of all. Um, and I was not, yeah. not well um, after a couple of, yeah, very surprisingly, um, very rapidly um, affected my mental health. And yeah, luckily the universe gave me a couple of opportunities to leave the industry that wasn't in a casket. Um, and so, and I, and I took one of them and um, yeah, so I, I've, I've done a bunch of different things and I'm now um, coaching and facilitating uh, and supporting people to facilitate positive change in their lives and the lives of those around them. Um, so uh, yeah, there's lots of different spaces that I work in. I've done a lot of volunteer management um, and yeah, supporting people uh, to bring people together to facilitate positive change. So that can be done in a bunch of different ways. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I like solving problems. So um, for some people, I just go around and help them organize their garage um, <laughs> because it's better to do things with people it's better to solve problems together Mm. so having somebody to work with is is um yeah it's good so that's what i do there um but yeah the good camera good camera effect we're we're asking for money in the groups is it's not it's it's actually not allowed by people like they can't um they can't have gofundme campaigns for anything that's not community related um so Um, I mean, you know, the fact that we're, you know, we were actually starting, we started a social media campaign to, to raise the awareness, because that one of the other challenges that we had was that for most of the people that are in their good karma networks, they don't, they didn't see the other good karma networks, they didn't see the scale that there were, you know, 100 across, across all the groups, um, there were 140,000 members combined. You know, that's a lot of, I mean, you know, conservatively, because some of the people are doubles, I was a member of all of the groups. So, um, you know, conservatively 100,000 people uh, in these groups that that actually, you, you've got to have eyes on that, right? So, <laughs> and their resources, you know, I think, uh, you know, to manage in, in any organization, to manage 30 volunteers would be a full-time job, you know, like, um, so 110 is three full-time jobs. Um, so obviously I'm not doing the, that as a full-time job because I can't, um, and I've got to find ways to pay my bills. <laughs> so, um, so I'm, you know, doing that as well as, uh, looking after these people and, and looking at ways that we can continue to make things more efficient, more effective. Um, and, and yeah, looking after the people is really, um, where, I, I like to be uh, because yeah, it's challenging. Teamwork is difficult, especially when you're volunteer, you're remote, all sorts of stuff. Um, and, and we embrace anybody who wants to be an administrator um, because we want people to be able to contrib- contribute. Um, and do, admin- that was another question I wanted to ask. Do the administrators need to be um, people who are like quite social media proficient, which I, I would not describe myself as that. I sort of, um, some people are very comfortable yeah, yeah. and very natural in um, 
yeah and it, would that be a requirement i don't think i don't think social media like um literacy is is the key because you can learn that stuff but being um being aware of what your role is as as a as a facilitator of a positive space where we're encouraging people to connect in their vulnerable times is yeah. understanding what what is involved with that is is key like it's very easy to get in there and just do the tasks and tick the boxes and add the people to the group you can do that um and you know keep it pretty um basic and so and some of the groups are run like that and just we just add people to the group and they do their own thing um and if there's a problem we tell them not to do that um but there are other um, administrators and teams that actually you know are really engaged and talking to their community and building relationships and it's amazing the feeling in those groups um the, the people people feel connected as a as a whole like they're these are the people of my community and i love them and the, and it's the kind of camaraderie and and um connection that flows into the streets i remember when somebody said to me i, I swear that people have become more friendly in the streets than starting the, mm. the kensington group harmony network and what's the x factor that um starts that do you think there's a a few simple key things that that make that difference that that make it I think it's just connection, you know, it's like it's reaching out and saying, I see you, you know, hey guys, you know, let's do this together. I, you know, what do you need? Let me help you. Let's figure out how we can help each other. And, and let's, let's do this together because I mean, people, you know, it's a fundamental human need to belong. Right. Um, and you feel, you feel like you belong when you're needed, right? Yeah. <laughs> when somebody needs you, you know, this, you're a dad, you know, like when you feel you needed, you belong to something. Um, and it doesn't matter who needs you. Um, if you're feeling needed, you feel valuable because you're able to contribute in a way that, that facilitates a, a better life or a better, you know, a better experience for somebody else because you gave them that, cup of sugar or because you, you help them with their furniture um so it, it actually is, is this mutual ben benefit of the ask for help is that the people who are helping aren't doing it that you know that they're, they're benefiting from that as well because their well-being is contributed to yeah. as a result of their giving um okay it sounds really good I think I want to do it. Can I just go and do that? Is it really straightforward? What, like, what's the process then? Can, um, I, can I do it while we're talking? Um, no, oh, that's it's not. Okay. I mean, okay. basically, you can, I mean, anybody can start a Facebook group. And I think this yeah. is the thing is, you know, I've seen people, you know, go, oh, I'll just start the account and we can go. Um, and there's, there's not, you've, you've got to work at it. You know, like I, um, for people that want to start a good karma network that's connected through the good karma effect, um, they fill out a little form on the, on the um, I've just gone to website. That. I'm going to share the um, screen for just a moment. That's a goodkarmaeffect.com yeah. slash connect. Yeah. Uh, not connect. I think it's under the start a network actually. Start a network. Oh, yeah. So, and then there's a little, network. there's okay. a little questionnaire that just basically says, you know, um, what's inspired you to start this? Um, you know, who, who have you got in your community that will help you? There's other things. Um, and yeah, that's the one. And then that comes through to me and I give them a call and I go, Hey, so, you know, tell me about where you're at, why you want to do this. You know, what's your capacity? Do you have time? Do you know people in the community? I just ask a bunch of questions to see if they've thought about what they're doing and if they okay. actually are invested in doing and making it, making it a reality because so, anybody can start a Facebook group. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the part that I'm hearing as a person with many commitments is, is the, like, there's a big time commitment. There well, well. It can be whatever you want, but it's about being efficient. You know, what I did is I went out to the people in the community that already were connected and said, hey, can you help me connect all the people? Go to your local community groups and get them to do the work. Yeah, 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 for you sure. Know, like yeah, there's, yeah. You know, and once you've got people who, who have bought into the idea, once again, that's a real community activity, right? Yeah. Um, I had a, and a woman, she's like, hey, I'd love to put you in the, the local rag, you know, this is great. You know, and so you get other everybody doing, and then everybody's contributing to the success of this, this community. So yes, you can go out there. Yes, of course, you need to do a flyer drop and, you know, or, you know, find ways to actually invite people to be a part of your community. Then you've got to think, how am I going to make sure that my community actually is representative of my community? You know, um, are there, you know, parts of the community that won't get reached by a flyer drop or by, you know, um, going to the local school or, you know, how do I get into it? And, and this is the thinking that the people need to have. I can't do it for them because I don't know what their community looks like. I don't know what demographics are. I don't, I can't 
like I can only get them to think about that. And hopefully, you know, some people come along and they're like, yeah, no, I've already, I'm already connected in these places and I'm already um, doing these things. And like there was a guy um, recently who contacted me and he's like, oh, you know, and I run the local men's group, um, the, the local father's group and, and I've got kids at school and I've got that, this, that and the other thing. He's already got prongs into a bunch of different places, which means that he can then ask more people yeah. to work with them. And then, you know, the other thing, of course, is I say that, that it's, I mean, it's essential to start with a team for a bunch of different reasons number one if there's any problems you know then you're not the only person that has you know problems in your life as in like if you need to go and do stuff then there's other people to look after it um the most successful teams are teams of people that don't know each other and um, with the richmond good karma network um, came together with four women who didn't know each other at all somebody did a shout out in another community i think said hey i'm thinking about starting a good karma network does anybody want to start it with me and these four very diverse women came together and, and they're still they're still all connected. In fact, one of them just moved to Amsterdam and her first letter came from her Good Karma Network team. She got her first letter and it was, and she posted it back on the group and went, I've just moved to Amsterdam and look what I got in the mail from your Good Karma Network team. It was just beautiful. And, and that, you know, when, when your community sees that, then your community feels really connected. They're mm. like, oh, this is such a lovely place. If those are the people that run this place, that mm-hmm. support this, that facilitate this, then I love this. Cool. And that's how you keep people engaged is when yeah. they love things, right? Cool. Um, all right. And so the, the process then is reading that, filling out this form, and then you, you work directly with, um, voluntarily directly with, if, if I fill this out and send it to you, you'll reach mm-hmm. out to me and we'll have a chat about it. And, I'll, and then I'll send you off to the community you, and you, you t- tell me, you come back and you'll say, you'll do your research. And if you come back to me and you say, I've done my research and these are all the things I've got going and da, 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 how do I start a good company with them? We start the network for you and then we hand it to you and say, go. Um, okay. And and you're a part of the community of, of administrators as well. There's a, we've got a separate community. So um, yeah, people can... Uh, but but they, they need to be doing it themselves. They need to be working for themselves. If they just sit back and expect it to go, um, you know, that you need to be chatting with your community. You need to be, you know, reminding them what they're for. You need to actually stimulate some inspiration. Like I said, you know, I asked about composting, you know, hey guys, you know, I'm wondering how to solve this problem. Hey guys, I'm wondering how to solve this problem. Um, hey, does anybody have a thing I can borrow? Um, hey, I don't want to buy this. So does anybody have one to give away? Yeah. Um, sort of thing, you know, just get, get people thinking about how they can use it and then they start using it and then they start role modeling that and then it flows. Okay, cool. I, I have people in mind that I think are probably quite good at that. I don't think that I naturally am. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. All right. I'm gonna... Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. And I mean, it, it's, you don't have to start a, a good karma network for there to be a good community group, but um, with what I know about, you know, um, about starting a community group, it's good to have other people to talk to about it. And the good karma networks uh, provide a framework um, that is about asking for help, but it is about, you know, bringing your community together to solve problems um, and support each other by using existing resources to, to solve existing local problems um, and, you know, create initiatives, you know, like the, the Kinsey his biggest morning tea was a terrible incredibly fantastic story where she went on the good Karma network and said um hi guys i'm you know wanting to hold you know kenzie's uh, biggest morning tea obviously to raise money for um for cancer her dad was dying of cancer so she's like hey can you know i need some help can anybody help me um and you know she got volunteers she got some things gifted to her, you know, and she basically, you know, first, the first one, then the, the Kensington Town Hall was donated. Um, and the first one that she ran was she raised six and a half thousand dollars. And it was like a community event, like a yeah. big one, not just, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. A, yeah. you know, a local bake sale. It was massive. Um, and then the next year she raised nine and a half thousand dollars. And the next year she raised ten and a half thousand dollars because yeah. it just grew and grew and grew. And everybody wanted to give up. Everybody got to contribute. I baked a cake. You know, everybody in the community baked a cake. Then you get to sell a lot of cake, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. And then everybody comes together and they had singers and all sorts of stuff. So um, there's, there's great opportunities to be, to be had if, if you're like, you create the opportunity for people to, to come together and do that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, lots of different ways to, to do it, but that's a, it's a good, it's a good model. Um, it's a good model, but it does require a very engaged 
um, set of people to facilitate it. I, I think if you want, if you want the best one, and I'm always looking for how do we make this the best it can be. Um, you can just have a, a community of people that give away free stuff, and it's still a great advantage to your community. It's still a great, you know, it's still beneficial, even if it's not very engaged. Um, as long as there's not too much negativity in there, well, if there's not any negativity, then you don't alienate people, which is good. And, and you know, I think the other thing that that a lot of people that that do, you know, sort of get out there with their opinions and things don't think about is the people whose who's good karma networks or Facebook groups or whatever are their lifeline, you know, and there are people in their houses by themselves who are watching all the good stuff what happening on good karma networks and just feeling really good because they're there. Yeah. Um, and that might make them feel safe in their community and might make them feel connected. Um, you know, like there was one woman who said to me, you know, I live by myself in Kensington. I don't talk to anybody, I don't know my neighbors, but I know that if I needed somebody, I would just say on the Good Karma Network and people would be there in a flash. Mm. And I was like, that is a that is a very important thing for the well-being of people in, in their communities, especially if they're agrophobic or, you know, like um, when that's your your prong into, you know, it's, it's safety. And, you know, it's one of Maslow's you know, hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. Safety mm -hmm. is, after physiological needs, safety is is key. So, yeah, those are the things that I always thought about that really I, I wanted to be able to create was, um, yeah, safe places on the internet um, for us to come together. And with the technology, it just means that we've got so much reach, which is why we're going to create Hey Humans, <laughs> isn't it, Chris? Um, well, tell, I, and I, I, I actually want to, I want to wrap this up reasonably yeah, yeah, cool. soon. But um, yeah, no, tell me again, we have spoken about this, but um, what, because that that's kind of, that's what our first conversation was about, was about Hey Humans is a, an evolution of Good Karma Network to your own platform rather than Facebook. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the thing is that, you know, with the, the problems we've got with Facebook is people don't like Facebook. It's it's not it's it's not going to exist for too much. I don't I don't I don't oh, know what the okay. future it is. Just, just but it, straight but it's, up, it's, people it's not dangerous. want to be on Facebook. But yeah, but it's hugely resource intensive. You know, like I can't continue to support volunteer administrators, and they can't continue to support their communities. And that's been an ongoing problem. Is actually the sustainability of the communities, as the the, the you know like we can't find volunteers that want to look after this community. So that's a problem. It's a massive problem. That, that's not a technical problem, though, is it? I mean, that, no, that's but, not but a limitation. No, but if you don't have Facebook. administrators, but if you don't have administrators, then you don't need volunteers, right? So, hey, humans is a um, a global network of people who um, connect with each other via technology. It's a bit like Facebook for um, you know a big group, a big Facebook group that where people can just find people in their community and say, hey, can you help me with this? Yeah. You know, um, but it's geolocated, so people can actually ask for help from wherever they are. Um, yeah, okay. So for me, I've, I've identified the things that are challenging for us with the good camera effect and gone, we need to evolve it. I want to help people help each other. These things have evolved to be more community focused or, you know, more about community rather than about big picture solving problems. Um, and I want to facilitate human connection that solves problems in you know, whatever proximity. And also, if you're not in your good camera network and you've got a problem, you can't ask your people. Mm. Whereas on Hey Humans, if you ask for help, you can make it, it's, it's based on where you are. So you can ask for help from a two kilometer radius, a five kilometer radius, 10 kilometer radius, um, if you need more people or, um, and it means that it travels with you. So you can just ask for help from people because, you know, ultimately if somebody landed in wherever I am and they had a problem that I could solve, I would like to know that <laughs> so yeah. I could solve them, solve it, right? Yeah, but we cool. don't have that okay. mechanism in our society. Yeah. You know, um, you have to have a community or a family or, you know, you know, and um, people are afraid of asking strangers for help, but they're very helpful. <laughs> strangers. Okay, so it's still like a Facebook group, but it's, it's well, Hey Humans, it's its own app and own website. Yeah. But but it, you you act in it like a Facebook group. Well, and... it's, it's not it's not acting. It's basically it's a place where you can ask for help yep. from a, a uh, um, people that live in it or that are in, that are in currently in physically in, in a particular area, radius. You are. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's a mechanism cool. of human connection. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's, it's facilitating the opportunity for me to see you when you need help and yeah. for me to be able to help you because the, people love that. And they love yeah. the opportunity to help. And also I don't have to, if I, if I don't, don't have the capacity to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that's the, the concept for me is to, to be able to, 
um, facilitate that people can find other people that want to work with them, that want to collaborate with them. And yeah. it might be, I, I, I've just landed in the area and I'd, I'd like somebody to go for a walk with. I mean, obviously that's yeah. not the thing at the moment, but, but I, you know, I, um, or I just want to go for a beer or can somebody give me a tour of the neighborhood or um, I want to meet some new friends. And that happens on Good Karma Networks all the time, but the Good Karma Networks aren't everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're only in specific places. Um, so, you know, we need to help more people and, and there are different diverse problems in various places. So um, um, separating them out is, is um, I think, important as well. Cool. I, I won't go too much into the details because I guess we yep. should talk um, privately about that as well. But yeah, yeah. keep an eye out for Hey Humans. Um, yeah. But I do want to ask, um, because you say, you know, um, Good Karma Network's not everywhere, but then in t like Facebook is a really good mechanism for easily getting people connected because they've done that really, really well. And sort of getting people onto another platform that isn't Facebook mm. can be a really, really big challenge. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I think that, you know, I think that we really need to shift our focus, you know, like what we're aware of, you know, how many years after Facebook started is we're much more aware of social environmental um, problems that we have. And also that people are actually actually just wondering what they're doing with their lives, pouring all of their time into, um, into, you know, making a living when actually they want to make a difference, mm. <laughs> you know, and, mm. and so people's, people's social focus or the, the focus of, um, of meaning is, is actually shifting and people are wanting to contribute in more ways than they can. Like I had a, a guy who said, I, tr I tried to volunteer at Christmas and it was too hard to volunteer. <laughs> like I had to sign this and I had to do this mm. and I had to working with the children's check and da, da, da. so I couldn't actually contribute. So being able to find just people that need help um, and help them directly and then walk away and go, yay, I helped him and they're better off and that's great. And I, I get this little, you know, testimonial where this person person's grateful that I've helped them so they just say wow Amy was great and it was so awesome to have her help for that time thanks so much cool. see you next summer yeah. in town yeah you know? and that's yeah that's where what you're wanting to do is is really aligned with um Jimmy Hertz's polka dot then too which is that's, mm. that's focused on housing mm. but the like the, it's the exact same um like community building tasks. Well, the, the, the focus is yeah. different. And I think, you know, I spoke to Jimmy the other day and, you know, the, we need to be able to create some solutions for some serious problems. His is affording um, affordable housing. You know, people aren't able to afford houses. They're not actually able to afford to rent places mm. in many, in many situations. So what is the next option? And the, our system, our economy is not providing us. It's just putting the prices up on all the houses, yeah. which is not helping us to access. So he's creating a different solution, which is, you know, is becoming very appealing to many people. So, you know, coming up with new solutions. And uh, I think that, you know, my, my vision for Hey Humans is, is that that layer of social support that is underneath the system, you know, our systems mm. are not looking after each other. You mm. know, if you talk to somebody who, you know, somebody who's on the NDIS, who, you know, has access to a bunch of funding, doesn't know how to get it <laughs> because they they, they just don't even, they can't read the, they don't understand the language that's been used and the, the policies and procedures and they don't know how to use the technology to access. So th there's this, this, the human connection piece of being with other people um, and being able to ask them for help is really, really important to even navigate the systems that we've got for support, um, which means that if you don't have that, you're still at the bottom with the, at the bottom is you're still sitting there with your problem mm. and unable to solve the problems. And I think that we, we've got that with technology. Now people are like, I don't know what to do with my computer. It doesn't seem like, you know, if I have to buy my solution, then I, it might not be accessible to me because I don't mm. have funds. Um, I don't have the knowledge to solve it because I don't understand technology or I don't have the access to it because I can't go somewhere. There's a whole lot of barriers that actually stop us being able to access a lot of the actual support networks that we have. So this, this next layer of, of social support that benefits everybody, not only in just solving the problems, but also in connection and resilience. And, um, you know, like the, the, there was a, you know, a woman, just to give you an example, somebody said this particular business has had to close their doors because the, the husband who runs the business um, needs to be supporting his wife who's got postnatal depression, right? Um, and so um, I want to raise some money to support them with their business. That was the, the call out, right? And so 
ensued this beautiful, um, you know, like offerings from the community that range from, yes, I'll give money to support their business through to, I've been through postnatal depression. Do they need somebody to come around and mm. I'll go and, I'll go and, you know, um, you know, do the washing. Here is some food, you know, like there's a whole lot of other mm. things that people need other than the thing that the economy can provide them with. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really missing in our economy is that the, and you know, this is, this happens in, in many settings, like when somebody's house burns down, you know, yes, we can replace all this stuff and we can give them insurance but what about the trauma they've experienced what about losing all of those photos I wonder how that feels you know like and sitting with somebody in your community who's got some time to just sit with you while you cry about losing that stuff that is incredibly like more valuable than the stuff to mm. be honest you know and we need to be thinking more about us as humans about being together and supporting each other holistically not just solving the problem here by this do that you know here's the solution like what else is going on for you that you need because we're not just you know we're not just transactional beings, we're animals, you know, that have feelings and, you know, complexities and, um, and emotions and, yeah, all sorts of things going on that need more input than just the stuff and the things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I think our economy and, and, and even the welfare sector still misses, um, you know, the, um, the boat on a lot of levels in a way that human connection matches and especially when it's just somebody who's doing it because they just live next door or down yep. the road um it works for everybody cool mm. i love it amy it's, it's, it's really good and you you are so inspiring in the way that you talk about that and 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 make it um very real and accessible and and um yeah. Well, th things are changing. Things are changing and we need to be changing with them. We can't, yeah. you know, just go, oh, there's a solution for that. We need to be evolving. And, you know, this is what I'm saying with the good camera effect. It was a great idea. Um, you know, it's still a great model, but I think we need to shift again. I think we need to be more holistic. We need to be thinking about all of the people rather well, than just the ones, you know, just the um, the ones in our sector. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Because we've got bigger problems that I would like to be able to enable people to contribute to. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, well, look, I think I am, I will fill out that form and I'll talk to some people to see who might help me with, with doing that. And then I think once I'm doing that for a little bit, so I'll, a little bit, I'll come back on Facebook and do that. And then, um, you have to be engaged on Facebook. You have to, be yeah. Yeah. And then, and then get a sense of what that is. Um, and then talk to you at some point in the future about, yeah. It's all about talking and, you yeah. know, seeing, you know, for me, collaborative problem solving is the key to all of these problems. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's lots of people doing lots of great things. And I think that, you know, if we want to try and be more efficient, and I think this is something that you wanted to sort of tackle is how do we, how do we bring people together so that they can actually um, all contribute um, rather than all do their own thing. And our, mm. our, you know, our society definitely facilitates that people think very individualistically about stuff. So I've got to start a startup, you know, I've got to create the next business. I've got to do this. And they're not thinking about how they could do it with somebody else and actually, you know, split the, the resource expenditure or whatever, you know, how do we bring more people together? So we've got more input, um, on this thing um you know do we need something that there's a bunch of things out there that are that are all solving the similar problems what if we could put them together and actually um yeah engage people in positive change and you know this is the thing with you know some of the other people that i've connected with and you know um jimmy is, is one of those options you know those those situations with polka dot is you know is there a way that that could be a part of of a platform, you know, that is about helping people, you know, Hey guys, I'm looking for a place to put my tiny home, mm -hmm. you know, and then the people and, and he splits the, the platform to people with land. You know, I just want to look for people that, that have land and they've got it in their profile. I have land. You can invite you come and land your tiny home here or um, think enough. It's another organization that are, um, they've created a, an evaluation um, for social enterprises. So, you know, social enterprises are businesses that are wanting to do good, um, for-profit businesses that are wanting to do good, either by giving back or various other 
uh, other ways, employing local you know, people in need. Um, and uh, so basically having a questionnaire where um, they fill out the, the, they answer all the questions. How are you contributing to you know, positive social change or you know, environmental impact and various other things? And they fill out the form. And so when people are looking for a business that they, um, they want to engage in, they're like, I want to use the most sustainable coffee roasters in the town. They can look on the map and go, there, that one. I'm going to go and do that because I want to engage it. So it's empowering people to make choices and they can go through the questionnaire and go, oh, this, this one's doing the most, you know, or this one's not doing the most, but they really have intention to. So I'll support them to get more business so they can actually build their capacity to do more change. Yeah, yeah. So it's about empowering the people to get the information they need. Mm -hmm. So if we have all of these kind of social, you know, socially focused people engaging on a platform, then we're going to create positive change much more quickly you know mm -hmm. um, and then everybody's together and then they're doing it together and it all feels really good too so that's my vision anyway cool, cool. Mm. Well, look i love it and um yeah well i'll um we'll chat we'll chat we'll definitely will hey thank you so much for for joining and chatting today and yeah thank you for having me it's cool. been great yeah cool. um till next time indeed all right bye Hi, Chris. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very good, I'm very well. Thank you for being flexible and patient with me today. No, that's what, uh, that's what is really important. Um, you know, we just, it's fascinating, and I've observed this in lots of settings, uh, the how rapidly, like we just, we stay in our own heads and, and we focus on what we need and we don't often think about what the other person needs. And it's amazing when you do actually go, hey, what do you need? Realize that it's actually easy to accommodate those things. And, you know, it's important kind of stressing people out if, um, if they've got other stuff going on. I mean, you know, I know that, you know, there's different expectations for businesses and various other settings and things, but um, yeah, no, I like to, I like to be able to make sure that people feel good first and foremost. And if they're stressed about what they've got to do and they're, they're running late and then they're not going to be able to talk in any kind of nice relaxed fashion, are they? Nice. So yeah. Yeah, make totally. it easy and for people, right? <clears throat> I very much appreciate it. Yeah, um, hey, you had a I just noticed you had a baby monkey in your um Zoom, profile two baby picture. monkeys, in fact, they were yeah. six and eight weeks old, two baby, baby vervet monkeys, and they um were. I was in Africa when I was at vet school, and uh. We were at one of our jobs. There was I was working at a, a wildlife centre, um, and one of our jobs was to sit with these baby vervet, orphaned vervet monkeys. Their mothers got taken for um, various, you know, they caught or whatever. Um, they mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we would sit with them for eight hours, <laughs> just be mum for the day. It was um, awesome. it was quite yeah, quite an experience. I mean, lots of other jobs we did, but that was. Um, you know, one of my favorite, just sit there and read your book or you, you know, cruise around and, you know, feed them every two hours. It was, um, it was interesting. That's a great job. Where were you in Africa? <clears throat> I was in Malawi. Malawi. Where's Malawi? Uh, like next to Zambia and there's Lake Malawi. Have a look on a map. Yeah. <laughs> next to, I think it's south of Tanzania, I think. It's been oh, okay. Time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, we were working in a, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, East Coast. Um, we were, um, yeah, working there for four weeks. Uh, my one of my best buddies and I, and went over to Africa to, yeah, do some. Essentially, it was um, vet a vet practicum, and so we did all the vet checks with um, with the vets uh, on the, the monkeys and that sort of stuff. And then we did some, um, yeah, sort of uh, surveillance of some other animals. Got to treat some camels for sarcoptic mange. That was interesting. Cool. They actually they actually said to us they they had this book and it, it said the book was titled Where There Is No Vet, um, and it was like how to treat your animals, all of these different you know African animals when there is no vet with yeah, these yeah. these problems. So, um, <clears throat> um, having three third year 
vet students handy um, was better than a book. <laughs> and so they said, we've got these sick um, camels. Can you come up with a treatment plan for them? <laughs> and wow. we did. It was great. Yeah, yeah. And that was like, that was a program offered through your vet No, no, it was basically um, uh, in your, um, yeah, throughout your, your vet school, you have to do a certain um, number of weeks of um, practicum across um, various different settings. So some of it um, needs to be in clinical, you know, settings and various other um, types of work that you need to do. And um, you can do, I think, eight weeks of it anywhere in the world. Um, and... Um, yeah, we basically yeah decided that we wanted to go to Africa and that was when we decided to do it. So um, it wasn't strictly, it was supposed to be sort of vet work specifically, but um, we were working in a wildlife um, yeah rehabilitation centre. Wow. Um, so yeah, it was um, as volunteers essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was, you know, an incredible experience. And we because course, we were vet yeah. students, we got access to more than the, the average um, volunteer did, um, which was awesome. So yeah, interesting experience. But, you know, great opportunity. I'm like, yeah, you know, vet school. Vet school was better than vet life for actually doing those things. But um, interesting. <coughs> cool. <coughs> so, um, all right. Hey, um, <clears throat> so we'll, let's jump in, huh? And yeah. um, how how should I announce you? I was going to announce you as the founder uh-huh. of the Good Karma Network. Is that is that? Um, and I think like it would be what. what what, how do you want to brand yourself right now, most of all? Something like that. Amy Churchhouse. That's who right. I want to be. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, and I guess, you know, um, who am I? You know, I'm somebody that, that wants to um, facilitate, you know, positive change and solve problems. Okay, cool. Um, and I do that in a, yeah. in a bunch of different ways, you know, I'm from individual, spe- you know, individual specifics and through to, to you know, community problems, you know, facilitating, uh, you know, conflict resolution uh, in, you know, partnerships or families, you know, that's kind of the work that I do is like, solve, I solve problems, you know, I organize people's cupboards. <laughs> I do awesome. all sorts of things, you know, when cool. people got problems, so, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, look, that's the kind of thing I want to talk to you about as well today. And I, I thought I'd keep some notes because I thought we might refer to mainly just <clears> any <throat> URL links that we want to in case the listeners want to. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, um, it'd be good to, you know, we, obviously we've been talking about Excuse hey you hey humans as a um mm-hmm. as a concept of you know a technological um opportunity for people to, to bring people together um is that something that you are you just going to ask questions or are you yeah. like we're we gonna yeah yeah, yeah we, sure so, we, what are we going to focus on because I've, I've got lots of prongs um, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, and i want to well, know which ones you want to cover or um cool. yeah so um I loved the last conversation we had and I thought, oh, I wish that I recorded that. There was so much really good stuff in there. So that um, <clears throat> made me think, all right, well, I must, must do it. Do Have it. a chat. At some point, yeah. I'm just gonna... Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, no, I just, you know, and I, I, you know, I'll kind of invite you to, to talk about um, the Good Karma Network thing because that's really interesting. But <clears throat> I also, yeah, with, as I kind of alluded to in the email, like, what um, we're doing with the tiny homes thing and then with the, um, that Melbourne um, project that you were talking about, I'm really interested, like I'm genuinely really interested in talking about what we do with these different individuals and organisations who have, you know, pretty good goal alignment and, you know, really actually seeing if we can um, nut out a practical way to align those energies to have a more actual effective big change yeah that's the that's the problem i don't know if we've got any answers there chris i don't know if we can, <laughs> we can workshop that but um that's i mean that's that's the and it is it yeah, yeah we well, that's what i thought i thought we could it's, workshop it and if we solve anything we've got it recorded um to, yeah yeah. It, yeah 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 that's good all right cool, cool. so I'm, I'm going to introduce you now and start officially um but i will all of this my little um, signature thing is that all of this intro conversation goes at the end of the podcast anyway. So, um, I know. <laughs> I've, I've, I've listened. Oh, cool. What have you listened to? Interestingly, on, um, on Friday morning, I rode my Jimmy. bike. I listened to Jimmy and then yeah. he, rang, he rang later in the day. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> it's yeah. really funny. Yeah. And then I listened to Jason as well. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah, both of those are good, good ones for you, for you to listen to. Mm. Cool. Okay, so 